This may sound like a bit of an overstatement, but timing is one of, if not the most important areas of playing the guitar. Unfortunately, it's also one of the most overlooked and weakest areas for most guitar players. We're kind of notorious for having bad timing. Hey, I'm Nate Savage, and welcome to this video of Guitar Foundations. Uh, the good news about this whole idea of timing being a weak area for guitar players is that it is fixable. You can get really good timing as a guitarist, and I'm gonna show you one exercise, just one short exercise that you can do on a regular basis on the guitar, or even if you don't have a guitar around you, that will help improve your timing and really be aware of timing in general. And you can share this with other people, especially if like you're playing with somebody like their timing's not that great. Just show them this exercise and they will thank you. All you need to go through this exercise is the knowledge of note values that we went over in the last video on rhythm and then a metronome. I have my phone here. I'm gonna pull up a, a metronome app called um, Tempo and we're gonna set it to 70 beats per minute. Anywhere around like that, 60, 70 beats per minute will be just fine. And the idea here, I'm not even gonna play guitar. Well, we might do it at the very end of this video, but I'm not even gonna play guitar to start with because that'll take this, the physical part of playing out of the equation and let you focus just on your timing. But the idea is to just listen to the metronome and count in your head, two, three, four, one, two, three, for to start out, just tap whole notes on the ones. You can hear the accent, two, three, four. Let me put this down here so you can probably hear it better. Um, and try to make your whole note where you tap on that one as on the mark as possible. Not in front, not rushing, and not behind, not dragging. So kind of loud. And one uh, tip here, let me stop that. This is a really important tip always either count out loud or be moving some other part of your body to the beat to kind of internalize that beat. If you're not aware of where the beat is, it's going to be really hard to make your timing really good, especially when you start you know, doing exercises and strumming uh, patterns and stuff like that on the guitar. Right now we're just tapping. So um, put this to 70 beats per minute and you either tap your foot, nod your head, or you know, sway your body, something to keep you with this beat and internalize it. And count out loud too. Three, four, tap on the whole note. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And try to be as just on the money as you can, hitting on the one. Four, one, two, it says a little early there. Four, one, two, three, four, one two, three, four, and the last one was right on the money. Um, after you've done that for a little while with whole notes, move it up to half notes. So tap, keep it at 70 beats per minute, keep the metronome going, keep your foot tapping, keep your head nodding, whatever it is, and tap on the one and the three. So half notes, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, Four. And you can tell, like, uh, the measure before the last one that I did there, I was rushing a little bit. This is something that I need to continually work on. I haven't done this type of exercise in months. I'm telling off on myself. I sh this is something that I should be doing regularly, and you should be doing regularly. I mean, you don't have to spend a ton of time on this. That's the good news. Just five minutes a day as a warm-up for a few weeks, and then, you know, lay off of it for a few weeks, and then add it back into your practice routine. And you can do this just tapping, but you also want to incorporate some playing too once you learn a few more things on guitar. Uh, once you've done that for half notes for a little while and you feel in the groove on that, move it to quarter notes. So tap on every beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. And one, and two, and three. And four. And now you'll probably notice I stopped counting quarter notes part way through that and I started counting eighth notes. Um, that's one kind of trick that uh, if you're not counting out loud, you should at least be singing in your head or thinking da, da, do, da, do, da, do, da. the smallest subdivision or division of notes that you can. In this case, I'm, putting, I'm counting eighth notes or thinking eighth notes one and two and three and four and it's kind of like mile markers putting more mile markers in between each beat that gives you a greater opportunity and uh, to hit the beat in the right spot when you're uh, tapping these things out uh, just because you have more mile markers coming sooner 
are closer together that help keep you on track. It's like kind of like tightening the grid or giving you um, less space between the notes. So counting one and two and three. Oh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And the last part of this exercise is to go to eighth notes. So tapping on the one, the numbers in the and. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And I'm I'm tapping. My left leg was going with eight notes, if you saw that, and my head was nodding too. Just to try to help keep myself on track and get in the groove as much as possible. Just being aware of where the, the beat and the groove is, whether you're playing with someone or whether you're playing to the track, is a big part of this that you just have to start to develop and make second nature. But this um, exercise is just called the rhythm tree. And here's a corny little example that I made. You can see how it starts on uh, whole notes, moves to half notes, moves to uh, quarter notes and then eighth notes and once you reach the eighth notes the idea is to come back down through the rhythm tree so eight whole notes half notes quarter notes eighth notes and come back down to quarter notes half notes and then work your way back down to whole notes again and if you look at this notation that i put for this i just have um the first measure has a whole note in it with a repeat sign or colon at the end of that measure and a 4x over it. That just tells you to play that measure four times. It doesn't have to be four times. It could be as many as you want until you feel like you're ready to move on to the next measure, which is just half notes. And then again, it just works through the exercise in quarters, eights, and then it works your way back down all the way to whole notes. That's the rhythm tree exercise, and it is super valuable for helping you develop your time and your awareness of where the beat is. And what you can do is do this at different tempos too. I wouldn't go much lower than 50. 50 is really slow, but it's a good challenge. Check it out. And when you do this slower tempos, you really want to divide that beat. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And see, let's rush there. Three and four and one. And that was right on. Uh, so doing that and then uh, going maybe to 60, then 70, then 80, then 90, then 100. You know, don't go too crazy with this. You don't have to spend a lot of time on this. Three to five minutes at the beginning of each practice session is going to do wonders for you. And a lot of guitar players out there aren't doing this because they don't think it's important. Let me tell you, this is important. It is critical for your development as a musician and a guitar player. So here are your assignments for this lesson. Not much to it. Just tap through the rhythm tree exercise. Go up and down. Start at 70 beats per minute. Incorporate it into your practice time. And again, it doesn't have to be a lot of time, but it is important that you're aware of this and you're developing your internal sense of timing. That's it for this lesson. Make sure to like and subscribe. Share this series with anyone that you know that wants to learn how to play guitar. And if you need any help with this, you want to schedule a private lesson, head over to natesavage.com. You can also pick up the Guitar Foundations ebook there. I will see you in the next one where we are gonna actually dig into some playing on the guitar. See ya.